I'm speaking to you from Colombia. I am at the moment in Bogota and uh, have just finished uh, an exploration of the Pacific coast of Colombia. When we talk about management, we need to reflect about how we are going to change the way we take care of our supply chain of our ways and means of securing raw materials transformed into final products and what to do with all the waste streams, the energy consumption, the packaging. We have indeed established a system that today is not at all taking care of the environment. We are considering the environment as a commons which is to be exploited by everyone. We consider it a dump site. We consider it a place where we can genetically engineer and put whatever chemicals we desire if it has the minimum of approval procedures behind it. We have established a business model that is actually pillaging, destroying the environment. And even as we are getting more and more conscious about the need to take care of the living systems on which they depend, unfortunately more and more are we still continuing with business models that as a model are destructive. It is not good enough to simply substitute a petrochemical with a biodegradable ingredient. We have to be sustainable and sustainability is more than biodegradation. That new approach requires a new competitive framework. A framework whereby our priority is not efficiency, is not being the cheapest, is not being the most competitive because you dominate the market and you have an impact on your distribution system that permits you through financing to have the leverages that exclude others' access to the market. What we're in need of is a system whereby we are offering in the first place value to everyone. The search for efficiency in management has to be complemented in the first place by the search for more value and value with what we have. Second, business cannot merely be about efficiency and value. We have to have a third element which is critical if we want to have a sustainable environment and that is resilience. Efficiency, value and resilience. As we have learned the past uh, 12 months, if there is no resilience, we come to lockdowns. If we have lockdowns, we have destructions of economic systems. And especially the entrepreneur, the small and medium-sized enterprise, will not have the ways and means to overcome political decisions that are inspired by panic and not inspired by real needs of our communities to be able to respond to what they have as a challenge. The challenge we have is that half of the world is under-consuming and the other half of the world is over-consuming. But both halves, both the under-consuming and the over-consuming, are still expecting the earth to produce more. We need to have a business model whereby we are doing much more than what the earth is already producing. And let me come back to a very simple example that I'm working here in Colombia. Coffee. When you have a cup of coffee, unfortunately, very few people realize that what you are ingesting as a coffee is the soluble component of a bean, which is only 0.2% of the biomass of the coffee cherry. Coffee cherries were traditionally farmed under the canopy of a forest. They are not monocultures in the sun. Coffee is a commodity. 10 million tons are produced every year, but very few people realize that when you are taking a cup of coffee, the soluble part of the cherry that was the harvest only represents 0.2%. 99.8% is wasted. How is it ever possible that we have a production and a consumption model where 99.8% is wasted? I would say it's a miracle that actually coffee farmers have been able to survive. 
And the world market prices today are so low, but the margins of the coffee sellers is so high, and the remuneration for those who are the influencers is a multiple of what the coffee farmers themselves earn. Those who are the icon of known brands earn more than what the coffee farmers earn. This is simply a scandal of a model. And I don't care what kind of a supply chain management and sophistication in the price setting and in the marketing and what the consumers want and the smells and the odors. I am only caring about one thing, is that first of all, coffee was already 200 years the reason of slavery, the reason of deforestation, but the situation of the farmers has hardly improved. Today, the regions where coffee is being farmed are regions in underdevelopment, regions with malnutrition, because we were so obsessed with always producing more coffee with genetics and chemistry that we wanted to increase the output per hectare so that the farmers, when the prices are rock bottom low like today, have nothing else to earn and nothing to eat. An ecology of a rainforest where normally you would have everything you need to eat has been diminished to an efficiency game whereby productivity dominates. This is what we have to change. And this is what we are changing right now. We are turning coffee back into agroforestry, where we are not only taking the harvest for the bean, but we're taking the whole coffee cherry as a nutrition. And it's obvious because research has indicated that the best superfood, the highest concentration of antioxidants in the world, is actually what we're throwing away from the coffee bean. How is this ever possible that intelligent organizations with grand names like Nestle, with grand names like Starbucks, never considered the pulp, the cascara, the mucilage of the coffee, which has more antioxidants than any of the other superfoods in the world? I'm bringing out a new book called Coffee Solutions. And in the book Coffee Solutions, we demonstrate that the superfood that is thrown away today generates a multiple of the revenues of what coffee is generating today, only using the bean. And this is exactly the challenge that we are facing. Are we ready to have an economy where the supply chain is looking at the cluster, at all the opportunities in the portfolio of the bean, the harvest, and how can we transform that into an opportunity not just to pay a fair price to the farmer, but how can we transform that into a transformation of an economy, a coffee economy, whereby the revenues are such that we can regenerate the forests? Today, we can accept an efficiency of barely 750 kilograms per hectare instead of the five tons with the chemistry and the genetics. But the 750 kilograms of coffee, we will use the whole harvest and we generate 10 times more value. That means on the whole, we're doubling the revenue. And the revenue that is being doubled is partially being used to regenerate the forests so that we not only have the coffee, but inside that forest in the right regions, we could also have the cacao. And the end result is a new product a product that is full of antioxidants, that of course has a good dose of caffeine, that is not only good for your health, it is good for the farmer, but it is good for regenerate forests. Ladies and gentlemen, management for sustainability requires a change in business models. That means we need to stop thinking as core business with a core competence. We need to look at the ecosystem and identify all the opportunities and then proceed with the design of the products whereby we deliberately increase the revenues generated at the farm. If we are succeeded in generating more revenue at the level of the farm, we will be able to bring wealth, revenues, stability, peace to regions where today drugs and guerrilla are still dominant factors and instability that doesn't permit us to really enjoy the quality of life and offer the dignity 
that is really necessary in order to be the custodians of the ecosystem. I hope that several of you will have a keen interest, study coffee solutions, study the opportunities that we have, and make that into your platform for imagining your businesses, your opportunities, so that you can become also the entrepreneurs for the common good. I wish you success. Thank you.